Thanks, Eunice. Uh, index of hydrogen deficiency. Let me throw up a few molecules after I put on the Skrillex and just give you the index of hydrogen deficiency and see if you can kind of follow along without any further maths. So alkanes seem to be zero and you seem to get one point for each double bond. You also seem to get a point for a ring culminating in four points for a ring and three double bonds. Fluorines don't seem to matter either. And when I say double bonds, I mean carbon-carbon double bonds in that case. The index of hydrogen deficiency, also called the degree of unsaturation. That means how many more H2s could fit onto the molecule? Who cares? Oh, what a question. Well, it gives information about the molecule and its potential isomers. Who cares? Shh, shh. Don't worry about that. Let's check out the first one, methane. Can I add hydrogen to methane? No, because then carbon would have six bonds, and it can only have four bonds. So the index of hydrogen deficiency for methane is zero. There's no more room for no more hydrogens. Looking at pentane, again, no more room for any more hydrogens. Each carbon has four bonds. Each hydrogen has one. So the index of hydrogen deficiency for pentane is also zero. Propene, well, you could shove on a couple more hydrogens there, couldn't you? That double bond shows a degree of unsaturation. And so, in fact, you could add two hydrogens. So what is the IHD going to be? It's going to be one, because it's how many H2s will fit on. What about cyclopropane? How can that have an IHD of 1 then? There seems to be no room to put on more hydrogens. Ah, well, you're allowed to kind of break the bond in the ring in this mathematical model, and you could indeed get two more hydrogens on. So IHD is 1. Here's the equation. Let me just check if it's in the data booklet. No, it isn't. That means you have to learn it. Oh, that also means I have to learn it. So looking at benzene as our example, C6H6. Now it should have four because it's got a ring and three carbon carbon double bonds. Let's see if that equation also gives us four. Yep, yeah, so that seems to work. Now, if in doubt, trust the equation. We'll see a little trick right at the end. But what about this one? Is there any room for any more hydrogens? Well, looking at that oxygen there, you can't put hydrogen on that. You could put a hydrogen ion on it, uh, but no, this is only to do with how much hydrogen you can add. So it looks like I can ignore the oxygen and sulfur with my IHD equation. And what about this one? Well, there is no room for any more hydrogens. But what on earth do I put for the value for Y? Well, you know, every halogen you can count as a hydrogen in that equation. And finally, what about the nitrogen? Well, it looks like the nitrogen and the carbon there has a triple bond, so... Right then, so you're going to add one for the carbon and one for the hydrogen whenever you see a nitrogen in the molecule. This is about as hard as I could think. Three carbons, six hydrogens, add one for the iodine, ignore the oxygen, ignore the sulfur, and that nitrogen means add one for the carbon and one more for the hydrogen. And from there, it's pretty straightforward. IHD is one. What about this thing, naphthalene? Well, the circles imply carbon-carbon double bonds. And I'm putting in the hydrogens to make sure each carbon has four bonds. Not putting one there because that carbon would then have five bonds. So that gives me C10H8. This gives an IHD of seven. Let's double check. Two rings and five carbon-carbon double bonds. Two and five is seven. Yeah, that seems to work out too. 
All right, try these. Pause the video and see if you can do them in your head. That's the answers. And we are done.